ओम नक्रदंड महाकाय सूर्य कोटि सबम प्रभम निर्विघ्न देव सर्व कार्येशु सर्वदा सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यम अवरधे कामरूपिनी विद्यादेश ओमशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाशाश
which tend to disturb the usual activities that people naturally observe themselves in. The question themselves give a certain direction to one's life until the person comes to understand that he or she under the spell of likes and dislikes. Ragad Dvesha. You see, Ragad Dvesha. To use the language of the Gita. That is the cause for everything. Raga and Dvesha. Even for extreme decision in life, Ragad Dvesha is the, the cause. One begins to recognize that the natural pursuit, Swabhavika Pravriti, that everyone engages in, is out of these likes and dislikes alone. I like it, I want it, therefore I do it. If you don't, if you don't get it, then what is the response? The, all one's all one's response arises from these raga dvesha's alone. The raga and dvesha, the whole thing, Gita repeatedly emphasizes on the problem to be raga and dvesha. When it is binding, it is a problem. When it is not binding, it is not a problem. When it is fulfilled, it is fine. When it is not fulfilled, then also it is fine. That happens, that, that comes only when you understand what the Atma is, when you understand the fundamental <laughs> problem and understand that the Atma, the understanding of Atma is the solution. Understanding of oneself. And within this particular sphere of reality, everything becomes right. Anger is legitimate, sorrow is legitimate, pain is legitimate. This then is, is where we get confused. When anger is legitimate, it is legitimate to be angry. Therefore, if someone says you should not get angry, you get even angrier. That's true. It's the wrong thing to say not to get angry to an angry person. You get more, it gets more angry. Even if you don't get angry, you run into problems. Once the legitimacy is accepted by you, once it is legitimate, problem is there. Uh, yes, if it is accepted, then you can move ahead without disturbing a natural activity. But when you begin questioning the very activity itself, you question the very life you are living. Only when you really question, when the flame of inquiry is proper, can you come to understand the fundamental problem. So how many understand the basic problem, fundamental problem? In fact, there were the entire Gita discussion begin with the discussion on the fundamental problem, self-non-acceptance. There is a mature way of approaching this problem and a mature way of approaching it. And in the light of what we discover, there is something called a prayerful attitude, a life of enlightened prayer, not blind prayer. If there is a prayerful attitude or disposition, which is Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga implies the acceptance and appreciation of Ishwara, the Lord, living a prayerful life. Why should we believe the Lord? Why should we accept Ishwara? Because, because the results of what we do not entirely depend on our actions. It is depends on so many factors. Therefore, we attribute that to the Ishwara, the Lord, who knows, who, who has in detail our all the accounts and karma account details. So you know what when to give, what to give. So we don't have really speaking anything in our hands. What we can do is we can only do. We have free will to do. Kartum shakyam, akartum shakyam, manyata va kartum shakyam. Only that much we can do. We should understand the limitation. That is what we can do. The results, the results are taken care by the Lord. He gives. So this is what, <clears throat> so when you accept Ishwara, then naturally the resistance, the resistance comes down. Then only you can lead the life of a prayerful life. The resistance causes friction and that causes disturbance and one cannot be peaceful. That is by living a life of karma yoga, living a prayerful life. That's, this is what brings about the capacity to be contemplative, to be meditative. There is surrender. Some surrender is involved. You do it and surrender. When Raghad is there, you cannot surrender. That is why Raghad Dvesha, to neutral Raghad Dvesha, karma yoga, that is life of the prayerfulness. Such a life creates this kind of disposition naturally, a disposition in which the knowledge of Atma, Atma is oneself. Who oh, am I? The knowledge takes care of it. The knowledge takes care of itself. Who am I is not known. That is why all the problems are. What is this I am? That I am is not understood. It is understood, but wrongly. Not understood as it is. 
Thus, it is very clear because of karma yoga alone, one can gain jnanam knowledge. So, therefore, to be a karma yogi itself is a big thing. To be a karma yogi, one requires a mature understanding, mature approach to karma yoga. Understanding the fundamental problem, as he said, it requires a mature approach. Even uh, to lead a life of karma yoga and accepting Ishvara, understanding the order and living a life of a, a prayerfulness, it requires a lot of maturity. That comes only by practice, but not by, not by any other way. That comes only by practice and one comes only by experience. Living the life. Helping yourself. In this shloka, important. The word Atma refers to you, the individual. Uddharet Atmana Atmanam. It refers to you. Atma refers to you. Here it is not Sachidananda Atma. Here it is referring to the individual, the person, the Jiva. Who by nature is already in the ocean of samsara. The ocean of samsara means it is in, the, in this world of pain. Mostly pain and pleasures at some times. That is samsara. Sam, samsara is... Pleasure, pleasure. Uh, if it gives pleasure, then nobody will be wanting to cross over the ocean of samsara. If samsara is ananda, if it gives pleasure, and that pleasure also lasts for a long time, nobody, nobody will be willing to cross over this samsara. They want to be in the samsara, but it is not. Samsara is dukkam, janma dukkam, jara dukkam. Jaya dukkam punaf punaha samsaram sagaram dukkam tasma jagrata jagrata janma the birth is pain old age is pain mirti that is death is pain everything is pain rarely you get some sukham that's why this is samsara ocean of samsara this samsara is painful you did not suddenly slip slip into the samsara you were born into it along with it and how do you get off, get out of it? By your own will. So, Atmana, you turn yourself about, you question yourself and your values. By questioning yourself, you re-estimate the whole value structure and whatever there is, there is about it, that is confusing. So, all problems are primary due to improper priorities. All problems are due to improper. If Moksha is a priority, then the problems are not really the problems. If moksha is not the priority, then everything becomes a problem. See, freedom is a goal, but it is not easy to set freedom as a goal. That requires, again, the experience, a lot of experience. One has to go through experience to understand that freedom is what I really want. Therefore, we have to recognize our value structure and in the process, our priorities will become proper. This inquiry, which are into one's value structure, is done by oneself alone. Atmana. That is why Atmana Udret, Atmana Atmanam. Lift yourself by yourself. So, <clears throat> it is an inquiry into right and wrong. Dharma, Dharma. What one is to do and what not to do. You see, because one has free will, one cannot commit, one cannot do as one likes. What one is to do and what not to do. It requires a lot of Buddhi, Viveka. If Viveka is not there or Viveka is for timing, if it is forgotten because of Raga and Dvesha, then one will do what one should not do. So that's why Viveka, at any point of time, one should not lose Viveka. For a Mumukshu's Viveka is a real wealth. That is why Sadhana Chatushtaya Sampati. Why it is called Sampati, the wealth? It is not just simply saying Sampati, Sampati. It's a real wealth. One can understand the real, the, the worth of it. Only one, uh, one loses it and then and uh, depends. So therefore, what one is to do and what not to do. Free will is involved, Viveka is involved. Because of this vichara, your vision undergoes a certain cognitive change. This then is one stage of inquiry. The next stage of inquiry is also done by oneself. So this is by Atmana, oneself has to do. By oneself has to do all this inquiry and lift oneself. That is what the shloka says. The next stage is, by one's own inquiry, one appreciates one helplessness in certain situations. You have done the vichara in the beginning. 
to start with, then you are helpless. This itself brings about a prayerful attitude on one's part. A given, it's a given situation arises, certain doubts in you. Then afterwards, there is an appreciation of Ishwara. And, and then there is prayer. This makes a person a Pasi. That is, one whose mind and body and circles are together. All of which is done by one's own effort alone. That is why Uddharet Atmanat Atman. Atmanat at, Atmana Atman. Keeping the body, mind, senses together, that itself is a big achievement. They obey me, I don't obey them. They are under my Vasha. Therefore, Vashi. Navadware Pure Degi, Naiva Kurvan Nakarayan. Sukam Vashi, Navadware Pure Degi. He lives happily. It's okay, Vashi. So Vashi is one who has got the Vasha of his body, mind, senses. He's got an objective outlook, approach towards the, the Sharira Manasangata. He is under his command. All the time that he is, he is exercises, yeah, no, yeah, the Viveka he is vigilant, highly alert. Spirituality is about being alert all the time. It is difficult, but not impossible. Being alert. Going to a teacher to gain the knowledge is also done by oneself. It doesn't happen by itself. One has to do. So one, one has to go to their teacher to gain this knowledge and implies a certain effort on the person's part. In all of these ways, the person pulls himself or herself up. Therefore, Atmana Atmanam. By this Atmana, by oneself, he saves himself, he pulls up himself. This is why Krishna says that one's benefactor, one's own benefactor is no one else but oneself. Atma, Eva Atmana Ha Bandhu. One is friend to oneself. One can be friend to oneself. If one is friend to oneself, then he helps himself. He helps himself by adopting the right means for gaining jnanam and therefore moksha. His enemy, if the person is, the same person can be enemy to oneself by destroying himself, self-destruction, going by ragadvesha. Not having the prayerful attitude, not accept, not violating the order of Ishvara, not understanding the fundamental, the problem, violating the order, going by the dictum of Ragadvesha, he destroys himself. Ab that is abusing the free will. Free will is, is given, that is to be used. The Karma Yogi is the person who uses the free will properly. A karmi or other person, he abuses a free will. Abuses a free will in getting things what they like, thinking that it will give them pleasure. Or abuses the free, free will even to destroy oneself. That is sheer abuse of free will. Only human being can do that. Just can abuse free will. No other beings. Therefore, who is an enemy to oneself? Yes, one is an enemy to oneself. To have been a born a samsari itself is destructive. If your mind is not in order, however, if your value structure is confused, then your entire life and the lives of those around you will be confused. Thus, Bhagavan says that you are your own enemy. Who destroyed Duryodhana? Duryodhana, he destroyed himself, really. Not that he was, he was killed by being Bhima in the war. That is, he has killed him physically, but already before Bhima killed him, he has already destroyed himself. Bhima is only a nimitta. By his false values, by his uh, wrong uh, conduct, the adharma, adharmic life, he destroyed himself. When your own mind, atma, your own will is abused, or when it is not used at all, that is also a problem. Used or uh, abused or not used at all then naturally it becomes your enemy. It stands against you. It destroys you. The mind is where all the notions that this or that will save us originate. These ideas are indicative of a will that has been fooled by itself and that by others because one allows oneself to be fooled. That is why Viveka is required. One should be extremely vigilant not to allow to be fooled by oneself or by others. This means the final fool is myself alone. 
because I am a fool, I can be fooled. I allow myself to be fooled. Therefore, I am my own enemy. I am cheated by myself. Nobody needs to cheat. I am cheated. I am dis and decept. This uh, this. I am uh, made. I am made a fool by myself. So therefore, I am my own enemy. What is the use of blaming anyone? Therefore, I myself an enemy to myself. Enemy means you destroy yourself. It could be physical destruction also. With the action, at the level of action, it could be physical also. So, and spiritual also, it is destruction. Atma yeva atma naha hikuhu. Don't look, the, look down upon yourself. This complex, this, the inferiority complex also is as much a problem as a superiority complex. Don't look, up, look down upon yourself. Therefore, Bhagavan says, may one not destroy oneself, may one not Commit harakiri. Atmanam na avasadaye. Make use of the will that Bhagavan has given. Free will. It is given freely. That to use it appropriately. That is therefore it is. Uh, that is why it is given. But it is not. It is uh, not absolutely free. Also, thank God, it is not completely free. Otherwise, because a problem. It is free. Up to the extent one can. You know, one can operate within one's uh, sphere of operation. That is, this is body-mind complex. We can use or abuse. Similarly, it's a limited the people around. Use or abuse. As a karta, as a karayita. Make use of the free will. Therefore, make use of the will and change. I mean, if the person is a powerful person, you can... It's, it can, uh, if you abuse the free will, there will destruction will be at a larger scale. That is very great. Uh, this so-called the leaders we have seen in the history, if they abuse the free will, the destruction will be at a large scale. Hitler and all. So therefore, making use of the will appropriately and change, which doesn't happen without you undergoing some kind of inner revolution, maturity. One has to grow, maturity. This inner revolution is a quiet revolution. It is not the creation of a conflicting ideas. Rather, a quiet inner revolution takes place in one's way of looking at things in one's understanding. Therefore, don't look down upon yourself. Na avasa the eight. It's another way of expression, another, another way of taking the expression, Atmanam na avasa the eight. Not to destroy oneself. Because to do so is destroy oneself. Therefore, don't look down upon yourself. In this process, you may sometimes have to mother the child within you. As everyone has got inner child, so you have to play the role of the, the mother to, to, to the child, inner child, and take care of it. If as a child you had been neglected, then you had probably picked up some problems along the way. Self-rejection. As a child, when you are rejected, then you will have developed the, the complex self-rejection. So therefore, when <clears throat> self-rejection causes, therefore, when you are not included, you feel that you are rejected. Even when you are grown up, in a group, you feel you are not rejected. In a society, you feel you are not rejected. In a working place, you feel you are not you are not accepted. You are rejected. All the places you feel rejected, even though the people around may not reject you, but the sense of rejection continues because it has developed since childhood. Because in childhood you. You add this feeling of being neglected, rejected. Therefore, if as a child, if as a child you had been neglected, then you have to probably pick up some problems along the way. And who has to care for this child? Who is a friend to the child? You. You alone. Nobody can. You alone as an adult have to mother the child within. So that is that's why Atmanam Atmana Atmanam Uddaret. You have to take care of the child. You have to play the role of the mother to carry us a child within. This is what Bhagavan was trying to say when he said here. This is psychology. Here what says is every person has an adult and, and the child. So therefore the adult has to the adult has to play the role of a mother to take care of the inner child. When the child cries the, then uh, the mother the, the adult has to play the role of the mother and cajole the child. The child should not be left 
uncared. That leads to serious complication. So this is what Bhagavan was trying to say here when he said, may one lift oneself up, Atmanam Uddharet. Atmana Atmanam Uddharet. This verse can be taken in absolute sense in that at every level one can say, may one not destroy oneself, Atmanam Na Avasadiyet. May one lift oneself up, Atmanam at, at, Atmana Atmanam Uddharet. Since one has to take care of oneself at every level, in the final analysis, there is no other force, nothing external to yourself that can help you. So oneself alone. Oneself means one's own body means it's complex. Karikara Sangata. Karikara Sangata along with the will, the free will, is both the friend of the Atma and the enemy of the Atma. So make the Sharirmana Sangata obey you. Make the Shrinamana Sangata follow your will. Let the will be properly used. Not, let, not, be a, let the will be not an abusive one to abuse the Shrinamana Sangata. So, therefore, the Shrinamana Sangata along with the will is a friend of you, is a friend of the Atma and as well as the enemy of the Atma. In other words, you can either be your own friend benefactor or your own enemy. This means that to become free of the samsara, another person cannot become a bandhu, a benefactor for you. Only you can do what is to be done. To grow or to mature within samsara, another person or the surroundings may be helpful to you. But to get out of samsara, but only you have to do. You have to release yourself from samsara, others cannot help. Nobody can, in that sense, nobody can really save oneself. Who can save oneself? You only can save yourself. Therefore, the no savior really can save. In fact, moksha is to be achieved by the individual. Others cannot work for one's, the other's moksha. One cannot work for other's moksha, others also cannot work for one's moksha. The fact others may, may be, uh, the other factors may be conducive, but you have to release yourself from this ocean of samsara. In fact, where moksha is concerned, the very person who was previously your benefactor could very well be an obstruction to you. Bandhu implies affection and friendship, which can, which can also be binding, even though such qualities may be quite helpful to one's spiritual growth, emotional growth. Therefore, in the final analysis, in terms of gaining moksha, you are the one, you are the only one who can be a friend to yourself. Unless you become a friend to yourself, you can be inimical. You become inimical to yourself and become your own enemy. So this will stop. So therefore, when does we are discussing? When does one person? When does a person committing suicide? When one becomes enemy to oneself, then the person commits suicide. Not being happy with oneself, not able to accept oneself. So he wants to put, to put an end to the pain, thinking that if Sharija Managa Sangata is, is destroyed, the problem will be solved, but doesn't happen. That is also a karma. The karma follows the results. The results follow the karma. So it comes, comes back again. So better be your own friend, not your enemy. Help, please help yourself by yourself. That is the teaching. The Guru, the teaching, the, the Kala, Desha, all these are the supporting factors. All the time, we cannot expect the factors to be supportive. But you can be supportive to yourself all the time. Therefore, Uddhare Tathpanatmanam, it's an important shloka. We'll stop here, we'll continue the next class. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamada Chate Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Vyavarana Hari Om Dhanyavarana